Okay, I think we're ready to start. Uh, welcome everyone to this kickoff webinar of the second e-course of the Solutions Plus Global e-learning program on electric mobility. So um, the second e-course focuses on the electrification of buses and their integration in cities, urban transport systems. And today we're gonna walk you through uh, all of the content, all of the practicalities, and also give you some insight into what Solutions Plus is actually about in case you are not familiar with the, with this project. So um, I'll just go very quickly through the agenda. Uh, and well, actually I will produce my, present myself. My name is Claudia Ribeiro. I'm a project manager at uh, Poland's Network. We're leading all the activities related with capacity building and in case of this uh, second e-course, uh, helping out uh, the leader who is uh, UITP. Uh, so I will give you a brief overview of what this global e-learning program looks like and consists of. Then we will have our project officer, uh, project coordinator, Oliver La from WEMI, giving us a brief overview of what Solutions Plus is all about and all the different demonstration activities. And then we will go into the nitty gritty of the second e-course per se, from everything from the overall learning goals and calendar by, as I said, the course organizer UITP and our colleague Michele, and then each one of the unit leaders, uh, in this case, Polos, VTT, ITDP, um, Centro Maria Molina and UITP will um, give us some more insight of what, what can we expect in each unit. And then last but not least, our colleagues from Kupach Consult will guide us through all of the practicalities and functionalities related to the Mobility Academy, which is the learning environment that we will be using for the second e-course. Um, and then we will have a brief moment for questions and answers uh, in case uh, any questions uh, remain. So having this said, I would uh, quickly hand over to our colleagues from Hupert, who have a couple of uh, ice-breaking uh, polls and also for us to understand a bit where is it that uh, people joining us come from and what their expectations are. Thank you, Kathleen. Yep, uh, thanks everyone for joining and we will launch the first um, poll. Uh, please let us know from which continent are you joining us from? We would like to know if we have uh, people from different uh, countries and regions in the world. So uh, we look forward to your answers. You just have to click on the, on the option on the continent for, from which you are joining and we will uh, see the responses. We see that already almost 70% uh, has voted. And, uh, okay, we will, I think you should be able to wait. Okay, so we have, uh, we have that uh, okay. Most of most of the people is joining actually from um, Europe. We have a great great percentage of people from Europe as well. We have from Africa as well, which is so good, uh, a, a bit more than twenty percent. And then we have like um, North and South America. We have also some people from Asia. So it's quite diverse the public that we have today. Thank you. Uh, we will now launch the second question. Okay. Um, uh, okay, wait a second. Okay, let's go to the second. Yeah. Uh, what is your background or profession? If you if you can let us know. Um, uh, what is your background? Maybe you are working in the private sector or in the city administration. We would like to know uh, if we have uh, people from different sectors, perhaps NGOs or civil society. If you cannot find the right option, you can also let us know in the comments. Uh, and we can see how, how diverse is our public today. Uh, uh, and also, um, yeah how mixed we have uh, the public today. So we will, we have already 70%. Okay, so we will now show the results. Ah, okay, we can see that the majority is actually uh, joining us from research and consultancy. We have uh, 
also another percentage from other we would like to see uh, okay i think nobody has has uh, told us in in the comments but um yeah uh, thank you and then we other we have also another part from the industry mobility industry and we have also some people from city administrations great that's really great and we have a last question for you now before we go into the into the content uh, what is your experience or with electrification of buses do you have some experience are you working in the topic or uh, you you are eager to learn about this topic. Maybe uh, you're working in another one and you would like to start working on the topic. So we would like to know um, uh, maybe if you are already working on it or not yet. So we have already, I think, yeah, 60%, almost 70% of people. Okay, we will close it now and uh, we will share the results. Hey, so we have a great percentage of people like almost 70 percent that is interested in the topic that's really great and we are happy that you are joining us and you want to join also for the course uh, we have also some people who is who have some knowledge but didn't apply yet and we have another percentage that is working on the topic so uh thank you thank you for your uh, responses and it's really great to, to see that uh, there is a lot of interest in the course. Uh, and I will pass it to you now, um, Claudia, back so that you can, okay, wait a second. I will just go quickly. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so as promised, I will go very quickly through uh, what we have in mind with this global e-learning program. Uh, we're not sure if those attending uh, are also attendees of the first course that we already organized last year or not. So it's always good to um, share this information. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so the idea uh, behind this global e-learning program is that it's one of many capacity building formats that we're actually putting into practice and organizing within the Solutions Plus um, project. And whereas most of the other capacity building formats are actually very much focused on our uh, demonstration cities across uh, four regions, this is actually the one capacity building format that is open to anyone and everyone. So uh, in addition to being free of charge, it's freely accessible to anyone um, as long as they have internet connection and a laptop uh, across the world. So the idea is that we have these moderated e-learning courses. And what do we mean by moderated? It's the fact that at least for a specific window of, of time, the people that you will see here today will be enga actively engaging with course participants, whether this is through uh, posting, uh, preparing assignments for you, grading them, reviewing them, collecting questions, and then getting these questions answered in here it says webinars but it's actually something we call exchange sessions so throughout the course you're going to have at least two moments where you will be able to um, interact directly with a selected few of our lectures and all of this together combined also with additional reading materials uh, entails um, ends up being this blended learning approach that we promote here so the main uh, let's say activity of the course or its core will be the different video lectures that we'll be making available each week to you. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so we aim to have this global e-learning program as the first of its kind, spe specifically focusing on e-mobility training. As you can see on this image here to your right, we do have a lot of demonstration sites across the world, and we do have also a very strong and wide-reaching partnership, which allows us to say with confidence that, you know, in the preparation of the course materials, we do involve and engage uh, not only local authorities and city representatives that can give you a more uh, boots on the ground approach and uh, insights, but also different um, stakeholders, not from the industry side of things and also from the from academia. So uh, the idea is also that this global uh, program focuses 
on different contexts and realities across the regions and not have it be too centered on one of the on the continents and we try to also do that by using different um, best practices or use cases from across across the world uh, yeah and and then as you will see in the program we also try to focus on different types of vehicles uh, it just so happens that this one is focusing specifically on public transportation and buses. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so as I said before, this, this e-course that we're presenting here today on uh, e-buses is the second one. The first one, uh, which we called electric mobility, it's more than just electric cars, was actually a general, more introductory course. So as I mentioned before about this moderation aspect, uh, the reality is if you go onto the Mobility Academy, which will be presented later, you can actually still also take the first e-course if you would be interested, or at least having a look at a few of the modules and units we have there. The main difference between one and the other is actually that the first e-course is no longer being moderated so, moderated. so all the contents are there, but we are not engaging with participants actively. So um, we already have uh, in the pipeline a few other courses. So for the second half of the year, we are aiming on having something that brings together the topics of e-mobility, intelligent transport systems, and mobility as a service. A preliminary date would be September, uh, but to be confirmed. And then we have two more that will most likely be launched next year. One very specifically on notification of paratransit, and another one that brings together uh, e-mobility and city logistics and freight. And we do have um, several other ideas, but we will we will see as we evolved about the timeline and um, the feasibility of organizing all of these. Uh, next slide, please. And then just a final note from my side, I wanted to also take this opportunity to actually introduce you to this uh, resource uh, resource rich platform, the e mobility toolbox, which is actually something that has been developed in the scope of Solutions Plus. So, if you if you go to that link, uh, what you will find are a, a very wide range of materials related to e mobility that could be useful to you either in your more research related activities or on your you know everyday uh, like life as a city um, official. Uh, and in addition to that, we also aim to include here all of the capacity building materials. So here, not what is related to this e-course, but also to the other formats that I mentioned before and that in of themselves are not available. So you cannot attend, let's say, a regional training, but afterwards all of the information is made available so you can still consult it. So that's it from my side uh, and of uh, this quick overview of this global e-learning program. I would now give the word to uh, Oliver La, the project coordinator, to just um, give us uh, a bit of information on what Solutions Plus is all about. Thanks, Oliver. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Claudia. Uh, very much appreciated. And uh, nice to see you all. Welcome to our second e-learning uh, course on uh, e-mobility and public transport. Uh, Katie, if you, you could allow yep. me to share my screen. Ah, here we yep. go. Exactly, you can share now. I'm uh, just finding the right one, I suppose. Yeah, here it comes, very good. Yeah. So just Excellent. a very brief introduction. Um, if you have not come across a Solutions Plus so far, uh, into the program. It is um, uh, an EU funded program uh, that started on the 1st of January 2020. So we're uh, around about midterm of the program. It brings together quite a big uh, family of uh, 46 uh, consortium members working in 10 living labs uh, in Europe, Asia, Africa, and Latin America, where we do co develop uh, with our local authorities, operators, industry, research. Um, uh, and uh, international network partners, uh, innovative e-mobility solutions across all uh, pillars of, of e-mobility. So we do focus here quite a bit on uh, multimodality, on the integration of shared and public transport solutions, um, but also passenger as well as freight um, uh, e-mobility solutions. 
and um, we focus on uh, urban change makers that are vital for the transition to sustainable e-mobility solutions uh, all around the world. <laughs> I'm sorry. And um, that, of course, focuses uh, quite a bit on local and national uh, authorities, but of course, also with our business models, with our uh, co-development of vehicles and um, uh, public transport, public and shared mobility solutions on the startups and SMEs, as well as industry partners, um, in close collaboration with operators, researchers, and lecturers, and, and financing institutions for the bigger scaled up projects. And this is embedded in quite a, um, a complex and uh, big uh, partnership between our program Solutions Plus, which is supported by the European Union, and the sister project, which is supported by the Global Environment Facility and run by the IEA unit, um, where we overall uh, support uh, almost 50 countries uh, gradually over the next coming years on different e-mobility solutions. So we are in it for the long haul here, for sure. So it's always worthwhile to, to follow our activities here. And um, we do take a, quite a structured approach on uh, the transformative living labs, where we start with informing. So obviously uh, e-learning activities such as this are key parts of this, where we focus on vehicles, operation, the integration of different e-mobility solutions, uh, now here we will be focusing on e-mobility solutions. The next one, as Claudia mentioned already, will be focusing on mobility as a service, um, but then of course also on logistics, the following one. So all of this is being uh, shared um, in our e-mobility toolbox that Claudia mentioned, so you're welcome to look into this one as well. And of course, all of these trainings and exchange opportunities that we have uh, here we also would like to inspire change with uh, case studies on different um, uh, solutions that have been tested, that have been trialed. Um, uh, so this is also something that will be embedded into this course as well, um, uh, which is of course part of a bigger uh, capacity building program. And um, in our uh, urban living labs, we do initiate um, uh, transformative change with reasonably sized um, demonstration activities that form the basis for uh, innovative business solutions, but also more transformative uh, scaled up projects. So this focuses on the co-design of the vehicles themselves, but also on the services, and then the demonstration uh, the interplay of the different solutions of the different types of vehicles, charging solutions, uh, etc., in a, in a more complex um, daily operational system, so that we cover the whole area of e-mobility, take those learnings from different operating environments, um, and bring them uh, to a basket of measures that can help and form the basis for. Uh, take up of those e-mobility solutions elsewhere. So um, that's where we have quite a diverse mix of uh, living lab cities from Quito and Montevideo in Latin America to Hamburg and Madrid in Europe, uh, Kigali and Dar es Salaam in Africa, Kathmandu, Nanjing, Hanoi and Pasig um, in Asia. Um, and um, the main focus is here on the impact on transforming uh, urban mobility systems towards uh, carbon neutral, sustainable mobility uh, solutions that make uh, a positive contribution to uh, overall sustainable development in cities. So this is why we do quite a, dip, a deep dive into the assessment of all of those solutions to then to be able to transform this to more scaled up um, uh, projects that can help transform first our living lab cities, but then also be a blueprint for others to take up those um, solutions. And, uh, and uh, this is embedded into this global platform that also includes working groups, regional platforms, advice on technical solutions, financing opportunities. So it's always worthwhile to uh, check out our activities and to be part of the reasonably big family. Um, and this e-learning course uh, is a good uh, starting point or continuation wherever you are. So um, 
that's uh, the short introduction. And now back to you, Claudia. So I think actually I can take it from here, Claudia. So thank you, thank you, Oliver, and good morning, everybody. We are very glad today to introduce all of you to the second e-course, which is produced in the frame of the Solution Plus uh, project. Uh, my name is Michele Tozzi, and I represent uh, UITP, the International Association of um, Public Transport. Uh, Katie, thank you. We can move to the, to the next slide. So what is this second e-course about? Well, as you all know, electrification is one of the main trends that public transport domain is facing. And this goes hand in hand with the zero emission target that many cities and metropolitan areas worldwide have defined in their long or medium, um, medium term strategies. So this means that more and more operators and authorities are actually considering the electrification of their bus fleet, either entirely or a part of them. And in the last years, we are facing a very fast development of this trend, also uh, driven, at least in some regions of the world, by uh, policies and legislation on uh, decarbonization. Uh, next slide, please. So this course, has been basically designed to give you an overview on where we stand in this process, in this transition, what are the technologies available today, and what are the barriers still to overcome for the implementation of a large scale fleets of electric buses in the cities uh, worldwide. Regarding the target audience, I would say that this course is designed basically for any professional involved in electric mobility and anybody uh, interested in obtaining an uh, international perspective on uh, electrification um, uh, in, uh, of the public transport network. However, clearly there is a focus on providing guidance and the right tools to city and public transport authorities to lead this uh, transition, because this is one of the main objectives of the um, Solution Plus project, as reported by Oliver a few minutes ago. So here on the right side, you have the five units this course is organized around. So from the introduction to electric bus system to the actual operation of the buses, um, each, slide, each unit will be now be presented by the responsible partner. So I will not go through the units um, right now, but what I would like to share with you is the uh, timeline of the course, the official timeline of the course, which is in the next slide. Yeah, so the course will start on the 28th of March and will run to the 10th of June. Five units, two weeks per each um, unit with one week break between the unit number three and the unit number four. This is something we have introduced after the experience of the first e-course to make the course somehow more accessible for uh, everybody. So the lectures, meaning videos showing slides, will be published on the platform according to this timeline. Lectures will be complemented with additional material, so um, publication, documents, statistics, and live exchanges. Katie will give us more details about that uh, later on. Um, so I think that now we can start with the um, presentation of the unit. The next slide. I think I have one last slide. Yes. So this is the core group of the partners involved in the organization of the course, Polis, DTT, Centro Mario Molina, IDDP, Unabitat, Rupert Consult, and UATP. There's quite some knowledge in this group when it comes to e-mobility, but it's important to stress that there are many more stakeholders from the transportation domain involved as contributors in this in this um, e-course so we'll, you will have the possibility to get contributions from from leading industries operators authorities and consultants uh, with first hand experience on e-mobility said that claudia i leave you the floor to start the description of the unit number one 
Thanks, Michele. Uh, so yeah, uh, here in this picture, you just see myself and my colleague, Andrea Lopez Verdo. So my, uh, the two of us will be guiding you through this first unit, uh, which as the name indicates, is supposed to be a very introductory one to more complex issues that will come later and will be presented by my colleagues. Uh, so if you could go on to the next slide, please. In terms of what the learning goals are, so departing from the very basis, uh, the idea is to make everyone involved understand how electric buses can play a very important role in the decarbonization of transport, particularly speaking when it comes to city urban mobility systems. Uh, and here we start really from the start. Uh, and from the, the basics. So we, in the first module, we will have a lecture by uh, UITP actually, focusing on everything from what e-buses are and look like and how they can actually contribute to a more sustainable uh, public transport system in, in cities. Uh, whereas the second module, here we offer a perspective uh, of a transport operator, in this case from EMT Madrid. They're also one of the many partners in this uh, project, and they're also one of the demonstration sites of the project. And in addition to that, they're actually one of the leading transport operators in all things e-bus related. So they have quite some experience in terms of the electrification of their bus routes on different processes of purchasing of these e-buses, which also take into account how fleets have evolved over time. And they've also uh, undergone a, quite a bit of a work in terms of the adaptation of, of their depots to, to be able to charge their e-buses. So in this, in this lecture specifically, um, EMT Madrid will also give you some very specific um, insights into what their experience has been in terms of what are the main existing drivers but also the main existing barriers that you may face should you be interested in deploying uh, e-buses in your uh, local environment. And then last uh, we're going to have a lecture by um, Centro Mario Molina um, so if you could just go back yeah um, uh, focusing on more of the financing and procurement aspects of uh, e-buses. So here they will provide the specific example of Santiago de Chile, but uh, let's call this a bit of an appetizer since we actually then have a unit later on that will focus more on the procuring uh, side of things uh, much more into depth. So this is what you can expect from unit one. And now, yes, I'll hand over to uh, Yancho uh, that will present unit two. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and greetings from Finland. I'm happy to see so many students in, in this course. My name is uh, Jan Sudorov, and I'm from VTT Technical Research Center of Finland. And over this course, uh, I would moderate the unit two, which is regarding charging approaches for e-buses. Uh, before I present briefly the, the program of this um, unit, uh, I, I would like to say a few words why charging is so important and why we decided to have it in in this unit, but maybe uh, I need this next slide. Yes, uh, yeah, basically uh, uh, considering the charging and all the implications from the charging are very important when we integrate buses in, in different cities. Uh, because integration of buses is not only just buying and procuring buses, but they also need to take uh, into account the practicalities from the charging perspective. Uh, and then uh, the charging of the, the organization of the charging services and also the selection of appropriate equipment uh, go, goes uh, hand in hand usually with the selection of specific um, uh, e buses. And it's uh, one of the uh, key factors for successful deployment of um, e buses because basically uh, e buses they need to interact properly with the charging infrastructure in order to make uh, all the e bus users happy. Then uh, uh, the efficient organization of the charging services also requires a good understanding uh, what are the typical charging approaches at one, one side, what are the available market, market solutions uh, when it comes to, to charging stations. Uh, so, so to say how the charging service needs to be uh, organized. And then uh, nonetheless, the organization of the charging service also requires good understanding 
how the electric vehicles operate uh, and uh, how components, uh, what are the main components like powertrains and, and batteries and especially batteries uh, when it comes to exploitation of the vehicles and the needs uh, of char charging batteries. That's why based on based on kind of this few reflection points, we decided to uh, state the training uh, or at least the topics in, in this unit two as follows, but I will need this next slide. So in uh, module 2.1, we would focus on the eBus technology providing insight and overview of uh, the organization of electric vehicles, including powertrains, battery, different type of uh, uh, vehicles like plug-in hybrids, trolleys, uh, fuel cells. Then a uh, brief overview, there will be on the battery bus technology, including the drive line batteries and different auxiliary components and uh, HVAC systems. Uh, module 2.2, we will focus on the batteries electric buses because this is one of the important parts uh, when we speak about the charging. So there will be a couple of uh, lectures focusing on uh, battery technology standards, um, safety thermal management, battery management systems, and so on. All relevant topics when we speak about, in general, electromobility, but also very relevant when we speak about uh, integration of electrical buses in the cities. And then the last module uh, 2.3, uh, it will focus on charging approaches, technologies, and use cases. In this module, we would provide an um, overview of the um, general charging approaches uh, uh, currently utilized at the depot, depot charge or opportunity charging of electric buses. Uh, then uh, we will focus on the available charging technologies uh, on the market. Uh, through lectures provided by some of the technology providers in, in, in the Solutions Plus project. Uh, and then um, uh, we will focus on, on presenting a few uh, use cases of integration of electrical buses in uh, different cities, uh, mainly in Europe. But I'm happy to follow uh, the discussion in the uh, uh, Immobility Academy and we'll be happy to take any questions from from your site uh, when the module gets open. But that's from my side. Uh, Michelle, uh, maybe, I don't know, I think Shauri didn't join yet. Maybe you can jump to explain briefly this unit. Right, so apparently he was having a problem in connecting. I share again the link, but probably it didn't work. So if you move to the, so this, the, 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 the unit number three will be leaded by IDDP. Uh, in the next slide, we will see the description of the unit, which basically is designed to give a global overview of um, electric buses. So we will start sharing some some interesting data on the electric bus market. As you can imagine, these data are quite strategic for stakeholders like uh, bus industries, suppliers, among uh, others. And this will give you a quick overview on the situation of the market today and uh, projections for the future. And then basically the structure of this unit is quite simple. We will try to give you an overview of the implementation of e-buses in different regions of the world. Specifically, we have uh, collected uh, contribution from, uh, from China, from Indonesia, from Europe, from Latin America and from uh, Africa. And this is not only but mostly based on uh, the work that in these regions are done by international partners of Solution Plus products like ITDP, UATP, uh, Unabidat, and so on. So if Shauri is not yet connected, I guess we can move it to the fourth uh, unit. And so I leave the floor to Sebastian. Thank you, Michele. Thank you, colleagues. Um, my name is Sebastián Galarza. I lead the transport and energy team at Centro Mario Molina, Chile, and uh, I will be leading uh, the unit for um, 
um, modules on planning, procurement, and commissioning of e-buses. Um, you can go on to the next slide, Kari, thank you. Thank you. So as we've seen uh, in recent years, there's been a strong uh, growth, uh, particularly of electric buses um, uh, globally, although much of this growth has been focused on a particular market, China, which still dominates um, the sales and, and the fleet of electric buses worldwide. We've seen uh, an uptake of these buses elsewhere uh, around the world, particularly we've seen uh, you know, Europe increased substantially the number of e-buses that has that have come into the market in recent years, but we've also seen uh, this happen globally, right? So we've seen cities across the across the world, particularly in Latin America, uh, adopting large fleets of electric buses, and we see that uh, th this is a strong trend. Um, various um, Various projections show that basically electric buses and two wheelers are the only two modes of transport that are basically on track to meeting the zero emission targets by 2050 of the Paris Accords. So um, this is a promising sector, but uh, a lot of work has to be done to be able to uh, complete these processes. So uh, Kathy, if you can go on to the next slide. Um, I just wanted to briefly talk a little bit more about what has happened in Latin America over the past um, a few years, because I think this is of interest, particularly for the audience in the global south, where we've seen uh, over the course of the last two years procurement of over 3,000 electric buses. Uh, led by Santiago de Chile, which this year uh, procured 991 buses to take the fleet to close to 800, uh, 1,800 buses by the end of next year. And Bogota, who uh, procured also almost 1,500 buses uh, over the course of this year, and they've already received uh, 655 of those that are already running on the streets of Bogota. So uh, this, is, uh, this is an impressive feat since uh, you know, in 2017, 2018, we only had two electric buses running on the streets of Santiago. So you can see that uh, substantial progress can be made, uh, particularly when um, everything is aligned, both the planning process, the procurement process, and the operations and the uh, and the business model that will be used for the deployment and operation of these buses, right? Um, so in line with this, uh, and Kathy, you can go with to the next slide. Uh, this unit will focus on planning, procurement, and commissioning of e-buses. Um, sorry, th th this is a short video that is just showing a little bit what the projection of buses looks like in, in, in Latin America and the, and the buses that, that you can see. And this is a tool that we developed, which is called e-bus radar that, that is focused right now on electric buses for Latin America, but that you can use also to track the deployment of these buses and the emissions reductions that we're hoping to achieve uh, through these deployments, right? Uh, but Kathy, you can go ahead to the next slide, where uh, we will focus on on procurement, right? So, um, one of the most important processes to be able to achieve um, e-bus deployments is the procurement process. There are different procurement models for electric buses uh, that include uh, charging infrastructure and, in certain cases, also the adaptation of depots. Um, and there are a lot of uh, different aspects uh, that have to be taken into consideration during the procurement process. And this not only entails technical aspects, such as ensuring interoperability of operation, making sure that, um, you know, that, that the range requirements and the infrastructure requirements for the bus operations are met, but also dealing with uh, financial aspects uh, in terms of how the, the, the procurement models are de developed so that, uh, you know, the risk distribution of the different actors is taken into account, uh, but also guarantees and other aspects related with uh, the operation of electric buses once they're on the road, right? So we, we need to talk about monitoring and how we also adapt charging strategies to, um, to these operations. So, Kathy, you can go on to the next slide. So a lot of these aspects are key for the procurement process, and that is what we're going to be delving into uh, during the unit. So we have three different modules in the unit. One is focused on procurement and commissioning processes, where we're going to see the range of different types of procurement and commissioning processes that exist uh, when when uh, when 
procuring electric buses. We're going to be looking also at maintenance and guarantees for buses and infrastructure, uh, minimum qualifications and bus specifications and how those are developed and how those have been developed also by different transport authorities and public operators around the world. Um, next, we're going to have a module that is focused on e-bus planning tools, and this is more dealing with what once we have the fleet in operation, what sort of tools are available to ensure that uh, the successful uh, rollout of this bus of these buses is achieved, and also how we can uh, we can manage uh, the charging events for these buses and adopt smart charging strategies for their operation. And finally, the module will focus on best practices and lessons learned from procurement processes across the world. We're gonna look at the structure of tenders and procurement processes, innovations and incentives for electric buses and bus fleets, electric only versus mixed technology tenders, which is something that has happened obviously uh, across the world as well. And, and finally, pr procurement and commissioning for charging infrastructure um, included during uh, in, in these best practices and lessons learned uh, from across the world. In in terms of uh, participants and contributors, we hope to have a range of um, different public transport operators and public transport authorities talking to us about their procurement and commissioning processes, but also um, in terms of VBUS planning tools, being able to include uh, different types of technology providers such as Volvo Buses, Geotab, eBus Plan, and a range of other uh, different companies that are developing tools to properly allow for the planning and deployment of electric buses. Um, so with that, I can close. Thank you again. Uh, for all the participants and look forward to seeing you uh, in unit four. Thank you, Sebastian. So now it's time for the unit number five, which will be live, let's say around end of May, beginning of June. So clearly this is the last unit and is led, as you can see, by UAGP. So I will be supported in the moderation of this unit by my colleague Aida Abdullah, representing the uh, bus unit of UITP. In the next slide, I try to summarize a bit what is the rationale behind this unit. So there are a few um, key concepts from, from my point of view that we should take into consideration when it, when it comes to the e-bus operation in addition to what we have discussed so far. So let's keep in mind that uh, more than 80% of all public transport journeys in the world today are a bus journey. This means that Buses uh, represent the, um, uh, the backbone of any public transport system, and in many cities, actually, they are the only option of public transport. So in these years, in the latest years, we have experienced um, an impressive development in the field of clean buses, and this development is, is, is changing the way public transport is operated in our cities. Um, when we consider the shift to e-buses, this is really a mind shift, from looking to the bus in isolation to a more holistic approach, which considered the bus together with the network and together with the, all the actors and the stakeholders involved in the process. Uh, consider the role of uh, the public transport authority, the cities or the energy providers. Um, fleet renewal in general is a priority for bus stakeholders. However, in a pandemic or a post-pandemic situation, if you like, we should consider a sort of balance between the reduced ridership and the reduced revenues that operators and authorities have experienced and the plans for uh, fleet uh, renewal. However, even more in a post-pandemic situation, I think we think that electric buses are a key opportunity to revamp the image of urban bus operation and to, um, to gain back the passengers trust in public transport. E-buses uh, give a, an, an excellent, are an excellent opportunity to uh, redesign the interface between the buses and the city and, and consider the level of innovation, comfort and sustainability that they bring. Now, in the next slide, you will see um, five main aspects that um, have to be addressed for the electrification of urban bus fleet. These five aspects, these five challenges are all covered either by this unit or by the course in general. So clearly stakeholders have to face higher upfront costs. 
electric buses in general more expensive than conventional buses. About 45% of the cost is the battery cost. And then you have to consider the cost for the um, charging infrastructure, the installation, the update of the depot. Standardization interoperability. This has been already mentioned a few times. This topic is key, will be um, specifically covered by this unit. There is a lot of research and development work on this item, and we will be able to uh, provide some of the latest um, updates coming from this R&D uh, project. So the need to make the charging infrastructure interoperable for different brands and between different categories of vehicles. New ways of operating. Services today are mainly based on the performance of traditional diesel technology. So electric buses require somehow a more challenging way of operating the fleet. New ways to procure vehicles and equipment. This is the focus of the unit number four, just presented by Sebastian. And of course, the need to uh, define uh, new business models, which can uh, split in a fair way the risk among different stakeholders. This is key every time an innovation is introduced in the market. And finally, an early engagement to create a strong cooperation of the energy stakeholders and bus stakeholders. All this item will be covered uh, in this unit. And uh, well, finally, I, I, I want to share just as a just a quick overview of this uh, four phases approach, which has been developed by UADP in collaboration, of course, with our members, and that we um, uh, suggest to any stakeholder who is interested to start working on um, e buses. So it's a very simple approach based on four steps. For each step, there is a keyword. So if, when, what, and how. If we look at the program of the Unit 5 a bit more in details, as in the next slide. Here we go. So the unit is split in four uh, modules. We will start with the, the slide look a bit weird, but we will start uh, giving you some information on the system approach. So as already said, the, in, in the case of electric buses, the bus has to be considered together with the infrastructure and the operation design. And then we will elaborate on the, um, on the phases approach just mentioned. In the module, Number two, we have identified some, some elements which are key for the success of EBUS operation. Just to mention a few, the impact on the operations, the impact on the depot management and infrastructure, and the need for IT intelligence for the monitoring and the, um, uh, and the optimization of the fleet operation. In the third module, we will try to give an overview um, on the integration of different e-mobility services, mainly um, uh, capitalizing on the living labs of Solution Plus project. So we will consider both the integration at the level of the grid, so how to charge different categories of vehicles, and the operational integration at city level, for instance, in case of sharing modes. Finally, in the fourth module, we'll just provide a wrap-up and we will share another, let's say, product of UATP developed together with operators and authorities with experience on e-buses, which is a sort of checklist for operators. So finally, in this unit, you will get um, uh, contributions from, from industries like PDL, from operators like the city of Madrid, the city of Hamburg, of course, from the UATP bus unit, and we will be able to share some recent developments from research and demonstration projects on e-mobility. So this is it for the unit number five, which means that we have completed the description of the unit. So now we have still one session uh, dealing with technical guidance on how to use the um, on how to use the platform. The course is based, and I think uh, sorry, Katie. So I leave you to the poll question. No problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you, Michelle. Uh, so it was really interesting to to hear the content of the units. Uh, we hope that all of you are um, happy to join and interested on uh, joining to the course. 
we will launch a last poll for you now uh, and we would like to know if you already registered for the course let us know did you register already or not yet or maybe you will do it just now um, and for that we will provide you guidance so uh, people are responding already we have almost 40 percent if you didn't register yet, don't worry. You can do it now. And also we send the, the link to, to register. So you can go through the link and register with us right now. So, okay, we have almost 60% of people who have responded. Maybe we'll give it a few seconds more. Okay, okay, we can show it now, I think. Um, so uh okay uh it's kind of uh divided in three almost the same number so around 30 percent have registered and another 30 percent didn't register but another um, around 30 percent also will do it now so that is good we'll give you the guidance now okay so thank you and we will go through uh, a very brief guidance on the mobility academy so this is the platform that we are going to use for this course if if you were part of the e-course one already is the same platform so we uh, you if you were part also of the first course you are already uh, enrolled to this second course so you don't, you don't have to enroll yourself again uh, so for uh, the Mobility Academy, this is a, a Moodle-based platform and it has more than 40 courses in uh, several topics about mobility, including active transport, public transport, SUMP, which is Sustainable Urban Mobility Planning, logistics, and so on. You can find all these different courses in the platform. Some of them you could even, uh, some of them already have finished, but you can also access through the platform. Um, and uh, all these courses will de were developed as part of uh, different projects, some of them European, some others international. Uh, so uh, you can uh, have a look if you are interested. So, uh, what, is, uh, what is to use this uh, Mobility Academy platform? Uh, the platform is aimed to provide a space uh, for you to learn in a friendly and open uh, space. So, we want to provide you with, uh, with, with a space where you can exchange with other participants from different regions, where you can learn from their experiences. And also, we use this uh, platform as a um, as a repository where you will find all the materials, including the videos, presentations, uh, readings, assignments, tasks, also discussion forums, all will be placed in the platform. So uh, also, uh, you, if you have any technical issue, you can also reach us through the platform and we will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, so what do we have in the course? We have different activities, also in different formats. Uh, the, the majority are, is going to be lectures, so videos, presenting slides uh, from all the content that you have heard already from the different unit leaders. Uh, we will also have exchange sessions. These are live sessions where we aim to show you a specific, maybe we want to discuss about a specific topic and also show you examples and good practices from different regions about the topic. In these sessions, you can also take the advantage to ask uh, directly to the speakers about the, about the topic or the case study, and you can also interact with other participants. We will also have uh, discussion forums in the platform. So these aim to be the spaces for you to exchange and show your experiences and ask maybe for examples or more details about the specific content or example you have seen. Um, so yeah, in, take the advantage of these spaces to exchange as much as you can. Uh, there will be also tasks. So these are different types of, types of assignments um, for you to reflect on the content and also to uh, apply the knowledge. 
So um, these exchanges will be will aim to be mostly in the discussion forum so that you can see what other participants have said and you can learn also from others' experiences. Uh, there will be also additional materials like readings, fact sheets, tools, among others, that will help you reflect on the content of the course. Uh, so about the exchange sessions, these are, for example, this could be not necessarily a webinar like presentation style, but it could be in an interview style or in a panel discussion where we have different speakers and uh, discussing about certain topic. So uh, we will let you know uh, in advance on the dates uh, for the for these exchange sessions and also the topics. So you can get ready for it and you can also book it on your calendars. We plan to have two exchange sessions in the course, uh, as one around in the middle and another one closer to the end, but we will um, communicate the dates uh, in advance. And also we let you know that all the sessions will be recorded and uh, will be available in the platform so you can access as many times as, as you want. Same for this kickoff webinar, this is, uh, this is being recorded and it will be available also in the platform. Same also for the slides, if uh, you have any questions, you can all, um, all the materials find it in the platform. Um, for assignments, uh, so the workloads uh, of, the, of the course, we plan to, to um, to the we plan the workload around two to three hours per week so this includes the lectures the videos plus um, assignments plus a few readings that could um, that you could have about the specific topics on the tasks um, the tasks will be uh, in different formats some of them could be uh, surveys also reflecting on a different on a specific topic uh, for example in the discussion forum and sharing your thoughts uh, your reflections on it with everyone you know, so that others also can learn from your experience we also aim to exchange as much as uh, oh, um, uh, open the space for the exchange as much as possible because we know that there are so many good examples and uh, um, best practices going on on the topic in different parts of the world so we uh, want to uh, um, open the space for these exchanges and learning from that uh, so whenever you finish all the tasks and assignments uh, and also attend to the webinars uh, you will also uh, you will receive a certificate on the course. So uh, once you complete all the activities of the program, you will receive a certificate uh, signed by, by all the partners. And um, yeah, I mean all learning materials will be will be accessible in the platform. You can also access after the course has ended. So no problem. Uh, you will you will have access to it also after it ends. So for the registration, uh, I I just post uh, the link in the chat. You can go through the link and also enroll yourself right now if you haven't done so. So you just have to uh, register yourself on the Mobility Academy. If you don't have an account yet, you have to create one and uh, filling all the all the information that is requested so your names and country and accept the terms the the terms and conditions so you will have to fill in uh, the spaces like it's shown here uh, also you have to choose a username and password and fill all the information that is requested and afterwards you will receive a confirmation email which is just to confirm that you is your email the one that you're using and once you can confirm then you uh, you have created a user already so um yeah if you can do it now that that is great so that we know that you're joining us for the for this uh, exciting course and uh, once you have created already the user you can access with your username and your password and what you just have to do is enroll yourself uh, in the self-enrollment uh, area for this course. Uh, another thing you could do also to access the content offline, uh, you can also um, 
logging on your credentials in the Mobility Academy and also go and um, click on your profile icon and also select profile so that you could access the content offline. No? So once you do this, uh, you can uh, view the, uh, scan the QR codes with the application on your phone, for example, and then logging in your user account and you can download the content to see it offline. So this is very useful, for example, if sometimes, you know, you are on the train or um, I don't know, in any place where you don't have connections, so you can access also the content offline. Um, yeah, and actually, yeah, we are happy to to answer any questions you might have uh, on the platform or on the course itself, on the topics too. Uh, we, we, some of our colleagues uh, will be also always um, checking the Mobility Academy if you have any any technical um, issue, so, and we will happy we will be happy to answer to your questions. So I think that's it from our side on the presentations and we can uh, go to the Q&A. Um, for this, there are a couple of questions um, from, the, from the participants. Um, I think also there, is, there was a hand, hand raised, if I'm not wrong. I don't know if the person is still there. Uh, okay, no, I don't see it anymore. Well, so on the questions, uh, Felipe was asking, um, in Jancho presentation, he's asking for potential support from, from the industry. Felipe is asking, how could uh, we help? No, um, Felipe is also happy to, to share his contacts for uh, charging infrastructure part. So, uh, Jancho, maybe you could provide a few more details how uh, or what type of support you're expecting from industry. Yes, thanks, Kathy. Uh, yeah, from the industry partners, it will be interesting to, to uh, let's say, have additional presentation maybe from the uh, about the available charging technologies on the market. Uh, and also, uh, if it's possible, some additional use cases uh, to kind of like en enrich the variety of use cases from different locations. Thank you, Jancho. Uh, yeah, thank you. And Philippe, of course, you can uh, reach Jancho as well through the platform anytime you want. Uh, for more information, uh, we have a few other questions. Um, yeah, to which extent we can advertise these training sessions. So, I mean, the course is open to anyone who, who would like to join. Uh, yeah, just students, industry, uh, uh, local authorities, anyone who's interested in the topic. So you could share with your contacts. Um, also, um, we have... Um, yeah, if uh, there is a question from Julia that says, like, if I take part in the course, will I receive a certificate? Yes, if you complete all the assignments uh, and uh, check all the content, you will receive a certificate. Um, yeah, there are, uh, there is there there are there is a question as well, which is talking about the case studies. So, which type of case studies will be presented in the course? I don't know if any of the, our speakers can maybe provide a few more details on the case studies that will be presented. Claudia or Michele, maybe you can... Well, this, I mean, not, not easy to, to respond to these questions, meaning that each unit is looking at specific case studies for the different topics which are covered by the unit. But, uh, but for instance, we are looking, uh, I don't know, for use cases, reporting on um, good experience dealing with, I don't know, trolley buses, uh, battery buses. Uh, there will be use cases dealing with integration of different e-mobility services within the public transport network. In this case, we will try to um, 
that we will try. We will involve the leading labs of the Solution Plus project. For, so, for instance, the city of Hamburg. Uh, when we look at the, um, the need for the redesign of the PO, uh, we will uh, share the experience of the EMT Madrid and the work that EMT Madrid is leading within the uh, UATP bus committee on the topic. Um, we have several examples in terms of uh, new business models and new schemes for procurement coming from Latin America. So um, international use cases which have been selected depending on the five topics covered by the unit. Not sure this answers your question. You can always contact us or contact the unit responsible through the platform, I understand, uh, anytime. Thank you, Michele. I think that that gives uh, a quick overview on that. Uh, there is also another question about uh, how to address the transition to clean energy supply for immobility in emerging economies. I don't know if uh, one of our speakers can provide maybe a, a, a reflection on that. If you have... Um... I can mention something briefly. Cathy, mm -hmm. if you want. Yep, um, sure. Just, j just in line with, with the unit that I'll be covering regarding procurement um, and commissioning of electric buses. For example, here in Santiago de Chile, uh, the tendering specifications for the procurement of the electric buses included a clause that all electricity used for the operation of electric buses and to charge terminals uh, has to be uh, certified as coming from a renewable energy source. So um, this does not go uh, directly into resolving these issues in, 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 you know, in the global south. However, it is a way in which you can ensure that your electric mobility project uh, encompasses you know, the full scale of, of the life cycle of, of, uh, of, uh, of the energy used. So uh, that's an interesting approach and something that can serve as a lesson for other cities um, looking to deploy something. Great. Thank you, Sebastian. Um, yeah, so I think we, uh, yeah, the, we have a few questions, uh, technical questions on the course. If you took the previous course, you are already enrolled. Uh, you cannot receive a certificate from the previous course, unfortunately, because we already closed uh, that one. But if you take this course, you can receive a certificate from this one. Um, there is also another question. Uh, what courses are being moderated right now? I think now we have uh, this Solutions Plus course. I think it's the only one that we have open right now, but you can uh, check in the platform and uh, yeah, anytime that we are opening new courses, you will see them in the dashboard whenever it's, it's going to start. And uh, yeah, I think we have responded to all the questions. Um, mm, yeah, some of the questions we have responded directly in the question bar. And if you have any other uh, questions, you can reach us also via via email or via the platform as well. Uh, we will open the course on the 28th March. Um, so uh, we look forward to to see you there. And uh, feel free uh, to share also the course with your colleagues and friends so that uh, more people can join also to the course. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. Uh, Claudia, I don't know if you want to add something before we close the session. No, I think that's it from our side. So uh, looking forward to see you there and welcome you to Unit 1. Um, and yeah, uh, keep your eyes out. Uh, we will have another course as well later down the year, but that's only as of September. But as long as you're in um, following us, following our social media as well, you'll always be aware of this. So that's it. Thanks everyone for participating. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you to the speakers. And uh, thanks also to everyone who got joined. We will see you in the course then. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good day.